Hey guys, Cyber Aquarius here, bringing you the final video of my series, Nitrates in the Aquarium. This is part five, denitrification media. It's been a long journey getting this far. I uh, meant to have all, all of these up within five weeks. Tried to upload one video a week, but unfortunately due to my work schedule and my family life, yeah, it's, been, uh, it's been kind of hard maintaining that schedule. And last weekend, Dolly VH and I rolled out our Marine Land sponsored contest, so I wasn't able to shoot this video until today. Well guys, I uh, started this series performing a nitrate test on camera. I wanted to do that in this video, but I'm not going to make you guys sit through a nitrate test. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shoot that video right after this video. I'm going to link it in the description for this video if you want to watch that. You'll see just how effective this denitrification media works. When I conducted that first test, my nitrates were reading between 7.5 parts per million and 10 parts per million. And you're going to be shocked when you see the results of the test. You're going to want to watch this test because while we're waiting for the full color to develop, I'm going to talk about a few tips and tricks using this denitrification media that uh, you won't read about in any forums. It's just stuff that I've come up with through logic, common sense. So click on that, uh, that link below if you want to see that information and see the results of the nitrate test. All right, well in part four, I talked about denitrification methods. That was a long video, it was about 18 minutes long, and I knew I was bound to leave something out. <clears throat> and I want to thank uh, Captain Awesome, JW Heiser 1302, for bringing that to my attention. I left out coil denitrators. Guys, I'm, I'm sorry. But uh, coil denitrators, they're all over YouTube, they're all over the internet. They're really uh, inexpensive to make. You can get your materials at a local hardware store and pick up some airline tubing at uh, your local fish store and get some pot scrubbers for your media. I'm not going to go into how to build it. They do work. The flow rates are uh, relatively low, between 15 to 30 gallons per hour. I don't really recommend one unit on a large aquarium, an aquarium over 75 gallons. Uh, I would use the denitrification media, but on a smaller aquarium, I would still use the denitrification media, but you can use a, a coil denitrator with, uh, with great results. So just type it in on your favorite search engine or on YouTube, and there's tons of videos on coral denitrators. They do work, so, okay. Thanks a lot, Jeff, for uh, bringing that to my attention. And now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the denitrification media. We're gonna talk about five different products that are off offered by three different companies. The first company I wanna talk about is Marine Pure and their one and a half inch ceramic media and their ceramic blocks. Well guys, the uh, Marine Pure has a tremendous amount of surface area, but unfortunately the one and a half inch spheres aren't really going to do much in the, in the way of reducing your nitrates because of the free, free flow characteristics of this media. The water flows through this media uh, relatively freely. And if you place it in a high flow area within a canister filter or your sump, you're not going to get these anaerobic conditions within the internal area of the, the media. This is not going to provide for these anaerobes to pro process the nitrates into nitrogen gas. It's an excellent media. It's relatively expensive, I know, because I bought four two-quart two boxes and it was over $200 for all four of those boxes. But Marine Pure has uh, come out with uh, their blocks. They come in different sizes, and these are effective at removing nitrates when they're placed in a passive manner. And what I mean by a passive manner, it's placed in your system in an area of non-high flow or a non-high flow area. If you were to place a block on the tray of your sump and water's being forced through it, it's not going to provide for anaerobic conditions. But if you put it on the bottom of your sump, where the water is sitting on the bottom of your sump and the water is flowing across the top of it, water is going to seep into the internal areas of this block. And it's going to be like a deep dirt bed or a deep sand bed. And it's going to provide for these anaerobic conditions processing nitrate into nitrogen gas. And one other thing I need to back up for a second. All of the media that I'm going to be talking about in this video, they do not require carbon dosing. 
and there's no risk of hydrogen sulfide poisoning your fish. So keep that in mind. The flow rates of some of these media uh, have different recommendations. The Marine Pier doesn't really have a flow rate recommendation uh, for the block if it's placed in a passive manner. There again, the blocks are extremely expensive, so check into it. You know, if you have a sump, or if you don't mind putting it within your aquarium, is this going to be in a passive manner if you use it like in the back of your aquarium, buried under the substrate, or you know, underneath your live rock or something. Uh, but anyway, uh, you might want to check into the Marine Pure blocks. The second manufacturer is Brightwell Aquatics, and I have their product here, Export NO3. This is a, a denitrifying media that also does not require carbon dosing, I've already mentioned that, and does not have any risk of hydrogen sulfide poisoning. But here's an example of the Export NO3. It looks like a crouton. This is a very dense, highly porous media that does not have a, a, a free flow characteristic. You put this underneath the water, under your sink, for example, and you try to run water through it, the water is not going to go immediately through it. It's going to flow around the media, and the water is going to seep into the media, into the internal pore structures very slowly, creating a very slow flow to within the center of this media. And it's going to provide for these anaerobic conditions for the anaerobes to process nitrates into nitrogen gas. Brightwell Aquatics has a lot of great things going on with their company right now. I highly recommend them. I've uh, exchanged messages with Chris Brightwell. He's a very knowledgeable individual. The only complaint I have with this Export NO3 is it's not that durable. Whenever you place it in a high flow area, uh, which it can be used in any flow, it, um, it sort of moves around just a little bit and kind of chafes up against itself or against the particles. And it starts breaking down into smaller pieces. Um, I've seen in a media bag where 115 grams of this was in a media bag and after a couple months half of this was, was real small and it kind of broke down into smaller pieces and in the bottom of the media bag it looked like this colored sand, like, like a brownish sand. Well what that was, it was this media breaking down into smaller pieces. Well. You know, Brightwell Aquatics, like I said, I'm not bad mouthing you. I think you guys are doing great stuff. But make your export NO3 more durable. It just doesn't last that long. And uh, Chris Brightwell suggests that you remove or replace 25% of this export NO3 on a three to four month basis. I don't really know why, unless it's become becoming clogged with detritus. But if it's in a, a well-filtered area, I don't see why you would want to remove a well-established denitrifying media and replace it with unseated media. So that, that's just my personal opinion. I wouldn't replace it unless it was broken down or clogged. Okay, um, guys, there are very few manufacturers within this industry that I trust 100%. But one of these companies is Seachem. I learned early on you know, my, in my endeavors in this hobby to see Kim put out good quality products that work and you can trust them. All of their products are based in science. They're right here in Madison, Georgia. They started out in a basement in Stone Mountain, Georgia, and they moved to an enormous facility in Madison, Georgia where they conduct all their own research, experiment, and develop all their products. I've been collaborating with these uh, people in see Kim for the past two decades. They'll answer any questions that you have. And guys, they have three types of denitrifying media. The first I'm going to talk about, I don't have an example of that here, but it's denitrate. Denitrate, uh, the only thing about it is the flow rates recommended for denitrate. Uh, you need 50 gallons per hour or less. And you're not going to find those low flow rates in a canister filter or even in the smallest hang on the back filter. I mean, you will find some that will flow less than 50, but it won't hold the amount of media that you need for your system. But the way I would use the denitrate would be in a media reactor, a fluidized media reactor, but you don't want this media to fluidize. You just want to pack it in there like in a, a GFO carbon reactor like I have, and 
you can adjust the flow rates of water going through the medium. Just with a ball valve, you can dial it down until you get 50 gallons per hour or less. The denitrate, I have a really cool tip that I'm going to give you in the nitrate test that will be linked to this video. I'm not going to talk about it now. Denitrate, I've never personally used it, but I know it works. I've talked to people that have read good things about it on forums, and I've got a trick on how to use it. Okay, the, the last type of denitrifying media comes in two forms. This is C. Kim's Matrix Media. Guys, I am super, super excited about the Matrix. I will show you the two types, the two variations. Well, here you have regular CKM matrix. This is a very dense, highly porous media that allows aerobic bacteria to grow on the surface areas and anaerobic bacteria to grow on the internal or within the internal pore structures, allowing for denitrif denitrification. And the matrix, it's uh, it's relatively small, but this is the pond matrix. See the difference in that? You see how much larger the pond matrix is? Both of these products are made of the same material. They're exactly the same thing, only the pond matrix is in the bigger, bigger form. The matrix, I would use it in a, in a power filter, a hang on the back filter, in a smaller system, or in a media reactor. But guys, don't let pond in the name fool you. The pond matrix is perfectly suited for the indoor home aquarium. And the advantages of pond matrix over regular matrix, I'll show you an example here. There are several, several uh, uh, benefits of using pond matrix over regular matrix. The first one I'll we'll talk about the surface area. If you were to take equal amount of weight of pond matrix and matrix, the regular matrix is going to have more external surface area for your aerobic bacteria, your nitrosomonas and your nitrobacter. That's fine, it seems like a plus. But the same volume, the same weight of matrix is gonna have less internal area for the anaerobes as an equivalent piece of pond matrix. Because the one single piece of pond matrix has more internal area for the anaerobes to grow than an equal amount of matrix. And I said the matrix has more external surface area, but guys, that doesn't matter. If you use the recommended amount of pond matrix for your system, you're going to have way more than enough aerobic area and more than enough anaerobic area with the pond matrix. That's the first advantage of using the pond matrix. Second advantage, being that it is larger, you have more gaps between the media. And if you're using this in a canister filter or in a sump, you're going to have a higher flow out of your canister or your, your uh, pump, you know, your water pump, because the regular matrix is going to compact more tightly within your canister or in your, in your sump, and it's going to restrict water flow. But with the pond matrix, it kind of gives it some, uh, some room, some gaps between the media for your water flow to increase or to, you know, to not decrease, I should say. But the pond matrix and the regular matrix does not require carbon dosing. There's no risk of uh, hydrogen sulfide poisoning. And guys, this stuff is durable. I've been using it in my 150 gallon for, since February, and this does not break down. The durability of this product, I mean, you can rub it up against, up against itself and it doesn't break down. It never needs to be replaced. You know, the way that some types of media such as the Export NO3 is supposed to be replaced, or a deep dirt bed or a deep sand bed is eventually going to have to be taken out and uh, recharged or you know, replaced. The pond matrix is going to last the life of your, your endeavors in the hobby. If you use it in your aquarium for 10 years and then you get out of the hobby for a few years, you can take it out of your system, put it in a bucket, get back in the hobby a few years later, it's still good to go. It's cheap. I'm going to show you a container, of a four liter container of pond matrix. This, this is a large container. CKIM recommends using one to two liters per hundred gallons. Guys, none of our aquariums are the same. It depends on your system. 
a heavily stocked African cichlid aquarium, I personally recommend four liters for every 100 gallons. That's just what I found to be effective. If you have a, a lightly uh, stocked aquarium, you may get by with one liter for every 100 gallons. But just keep that in mind. This, this media does not uh, colonize with anaerobic bacteria overnight. It takes several months for this to become fully effective. You will see results after three to four weeks. You will see nitrates start to be reduced. But if you want to maintain the ultimate lowest possible nitrates, you need to give this some time. Don't put it in your system and one month later say, oh, it's not working. You know, give it time, guys. This aquarium has been set up since February. It is now September. I've reached almost zero parts per million a couple times, but I've added fish. I had a couple fish deaths, and, you know, things got out of balance, but now it's all back in balance. Just watch the nitrate test. But anyway, I know I'm rambling on. This uh, four liter tub is available at Pet Solutions for $30. It's four liters, guys. That's minimum enough for a 200 gallon aquarium or a 100 gallon aquarium. Maximum it could be used on a 400 gallon aquarium. Compare that to an aquarium here or, you know, uh, a sulfur biodenitrator or, or anything. I mean, your, your best bang for your buck is with the pod matrix. You can also pick up 20 liters of Pond Matrix at Pet Solutions for $95. Guys, unless they come out with a media that's free and does the same thing, I'm using Pond Matrix on the rest of my, my aquariums from now on. I'll use the Matrix maybe in a smaller system where the Pond Matrix won't be, uh, won't be sufficient because of its size. But guys, Matrix is my personal favorite media out there. It does twice of what other media does. It provides aerobic conditions as well as anaerobic conditions. It's cheap, it lasts forever, and it works. Guys, if you want to watch the nitrate test video, click on the link below. And thanks for watching. This is Cyber Aquarius saying thank you. Thanks for watching all five of these videos. I appreciate it, guys. Everybody take care.